Hey guys, what's cracking? I think I got my issue fixed, so somebody give me a 5 for 5. I pulled down the previous one. Just wanted to make sure that that junk was not there anymore. <laughs> Nobody would have watched that one anyway. It was so bad. Um, so somebody could give me a 5 for 5, and we'll go ahead and roll on with this. Okay. Alright, Vortex, good to see you. Um, yeah, with that being said, please share this. I know I've been saying that a lot, but I'm really trying to get back into into doing this. And the only way I'm going to get back on the algorithm in any kind of good way is to be able to have everybody share it. Um, I am going to keep it straight to the point since I've already went over a lot of this. For those of you who weren't here the first live stream, um, yeah, it was 25 minutes and I cut it short because the last five minutes of it was a black screen with just me talking because... My computer was being stupid. Wasn't the internet, and it had nothing to do with what's going on with space weather either. It was my computer. So I'll, I'm taking the fault for that one. That was not intended, but that's what happened. So um, I don't want anybody thinking it was anything else. Um, but with that being said, what I will, uh, we'll go ahead and jump into this. We've had a R2 flare. R radio blackout, I should say. R2 radio blackout with the, I think it was like an M... I guess a six, maybe flare. It, it maybe a little bit bigger. I think it was. I think it was more like an M6, though. It was pretty powerful flare. Okay, I'll just I'll just put it to you that way. It, it was a significant flare. Um, it was more of a long duration flare. What that means is it flared longer, which means it probably produced a CME, and and I think that it did. And I do think that this is probably going to hit us. Uh, some of it, some of the CMEs I'm getting ready to talk about. I do think are going to hit. And something else I will say here, guys, we got hit with a geomagnetic storm down here. Now, I know that this isn't showing a G1 storm yet, which would be a KP of 5. That KP is just the, the measure that they use um, to gauge geomagnetic activity when it hits. And that, that could be produced by coronal hole streams. That can be produced by CMEs, those kinds of things. Um, it's geomagnetic activity, okay? But that's how they, that's the unit of measurement that they use here. And this is a three-hour average, these bars are, okay? But we have a German website that we can also go to. And they got an HP, which is the same exact data. It's just in a 30-minute increment. You guys see what happened here? We were at a, a KP of, or an HP of 5 for uh, an hour. Okay, so we did get into geomagnetic storm levels for an hour. And what that means is absolutely nothing other than <laughs> we did get into storm level and we, you know, it was an increase in activity and it's showing it here. This is more real time. Okay, so I would just say that. It was, is it a big deal? Absolutely not. This is a very low level thing that happened, but it was not expected. That's what why I'm even bringing it up. Okay. Um, it was probably like a stealth CME or something like that that just hit. Could have been the current sheet. And I'm going to explain that in just a second because with that happening, and before we get into that, though, I do want to show you guys the, the flare. Okay. Um, I'm going to take you over here first. This is SDO. This is from our view. Okay. And the flare came from a, a growing and more complex area of sunspot over here. Okay, and you already seen it right there. Now, that right there, I believe, was the moon went in between the satellite and the sun. Okay, I'm pretty sure that was the moon. Usually, that's what it looks like when the moon goes through. Um, I don't think it was the Earth, because um, that sometimes happens also. It could be, I guess. I haven't really looked. I'm not going to dig too much into it, but that's all that that is. It's very expected. We can go look at it, and it was, you know, probably had people out there telling you, hey, this is going to happen today, and all that. Um, but just kind of ignore that. But the flare happened here, right about now. You see how they got bright? But you see this down here? All these areas, guys, that's a lot of uh, magnetic filament activity. Some of these are erupting out. See that one? That was very photogenic. It happened at the same time this flare did, so they're probably related. It just got, you know disrupted over here now i want to show you this it's gonna be hard to see watch up Oop. watch up in here 
a little dark shadow here. Watch what happens. You guys probably can barely see that, can you? That was a filament releasing. And this is why I say we got to pay attention when stuff's here because the sun's the background. So it makes it harder to see when things are erupting. And that's why we look at different angstroms. And we're going to go do that right now. We're going to look at just some different angstroms. And that's just a different part of the light spectrum. And we see different gases. The one we just looked at was the 304. That was uh, ionized helium. This is the 94 angstrom of light. And this is going to show you the flare a little better too. Watch right here. It's getting ready to happen. Right there. Okay. It was actually still flaring when we lost our image right there. We're still getting images of it. Um, also, there was a, this one over here was flaring at the same time. So again, all this stuff was happening all at the same time. Um, and you do see a couple other little small eruptions. Now, this is on the 13th and 14th, okay? This isn't just like a couple hours here. This is over 24 hours. Um, it's all the data on the 13th and then what we have so far on the 14th. So, you can see how that passed through there. Um, but, so let's go look at another angstrom and we'll see what we get and see how much we might be able to catch blowing off the sun here. Um, this is the 131. This is pretty photogenic. We see, we use this when we're looking at flares a lot. Um, so watch right here. Yeah. So I, you know, that was kind of like a, a couple different bursts there, but it wasn't more of a long duration one. Um, and again, we're just seeing a different gas here and that's what we're seeing. Now, when you see that, the flashing, that's actually x-ray. That's here in eight minutes. It's moving at the speed of light. The stuff when we're talking about plasma and things like that, CMEs, it takes two to three days for that stuff to get here. So that's why it's not like an urgent thing when we see these things. Now, on the bigger ones, like if we were going to have a big issue with something, the flare itself can cause issues too. Radio blackouts, for example, which is that actually did. Um, but when we're talking CMEs and like power outage stuff, um, those are going to be your faster moving, more dense CMEs. And those are going to get here in probably less than a day. I think the Carrington event in 1859, the one everybody talks about, got here in like 12 hours or something like that, 12 or 15 hours. It was moving, okay? Um, and that's why. And it was more than one eruption too, by the way. And, and that's, but I'm not going to go into details here. But as you can tell right here, see how that disrupted the corona? When you see those kind of eruptions here on the 211, um, it does kind of show that, you know, some of this stuff did go out. So, I just wanted to point that out. Now, um, we can also take a look at SEEDS, which is on the SOHO Observatory. It's a satellite a million miles closer to the sun than what we are. And this is a coronagraph. So, from our point of view, it's just a little closer to the sun. So this is on the 13th. I'm going to hit start, and we're going to be able to see these eruptions. Okay? Here's the one that happened over here. Boom. That's from that flare. Okay? And then after that, you're kind of seeing halo stuff going on, right? What's a halo? Well, you see it peeking around this occulter disk. That's a permanent part of the satellite. It's an actual physical disk. So when you see imaging, like, circling this thing, it's called a halo. And that just shows things are either coming right at the Earth or going directly away. And I just showed you on SDO that stuff's coming at Earth. Um, so whether or not um, any of this hits us, I do think we are going to see some more activity in the next couple days. Um, what I will say is this, that um, NASA, or not NASA, but NOAA, their forecast model here, is showing kind of like a double hit here, but this was... CMEs that popped off that they're showing like on the 12th. Okay, 12th and, and before this flare. See those two? Those are CMEs. Now, coronal hole stream looks more like these other signatures here. So I know it wasn't the coronal hole. So what we're saying here, I don't know if these are actually going to happen this way. I'm not sure yet. Um, NASA isn't NASA's model of this doesn't show two CMEs at once. It never does unless they happen like right at the same time. Um, that particular model just shows one at a time. Um, this one here shows everything all at once. 
So you got two days historic data and it forecasts five days out in advance. So I do think we're going to get some more activity here. Um, is it going to be big time stuff? I don't know. Um, it could. But I want to point something out here too. Okay. We'll take you over here to the Discover data. And I talked about this in my last stream that I had to pull down there. Um, we got into that geomagnetic storm, right? So what's going on, right? Well, BZ is negative 6. I always tell you guys that. Negative polarity on a BZ. It's the orientation, polarity and orientation of our magnetic field. When it's negative 6 or greater, meaning negative 6, 7, 8, 9, um, that means we're in the proper position for that stuff to get kind of sucked into our system. Um, you know, negative and positive attract each other. So if the stuff coming from the sun's positive and we're in a negative orientation, it's going to let it in. If it stuff's coming from the sun is positive and we're in a positive orientation, say above this line here, it actually kind of deflects it. So that's, you know, right. We stayed for like over 12 hours at negative six or more when you see it purple here. But what's interesting is if I was to just take that completely out of the equation and look at the other data points, when you look at the density, the density stayed steady and dropped. The speed is very, very, I'm just going to call it it's slow. That's slow. Okay. Um, you know, it didn't even get over 400. Three to 500 is what we consider normal. So that's like right in the middle. Temperature is normal, low. All these data points, if you weren't going to look at the BZ, you wouldn't think anything was going on. At all, period. So, I mean, we could have got hit with the current sheet, I guess, but usually you see things flipping and flopping when that happens. And I'm not going to go into what the current sheet is. It hits us every once in a while. It's, it's part of our system. I'm not going to, again, I don't have time really to go into that. Um, but, so, with that being said, it had to be this BZ, or orientation, our magnetic field got into a position that it was just able to accept it more and whatever was coming at us. And again, we probably did have some stuff that they didn't really like point out. Um, so what I'm going to do, let's check out the magnetopause models. And these things are probably going to be hitting. You know, I even mentioned la last night that, hey, we had some magnetic pressure hanging around and we weren't in storm level yet, right? If you guys remember my last stream. Now check this out. This is showing you like a double bow shock signature. And this is typical, okay? You got a bow shock, which is the point where solar wind hits our magnetic field. And then you have like a secondary bow shock here. It's there all the time. Doesn't always show up on this model. Uh, but what you're seeing here, guys, is, yeah, I mean, this is what I would have expected to see. Um, but this is pressure, magnetic pressure is what you're looking at. Sun's off to the left. All right, so it's moving from left to right. Now, um, if we look at the density, uh, I don't know what we're going to find. Well, what the heck was that? I don't want to jack that up, do I? So if we take a look at the density, the white is low density. And then you got your blues, which is your darker densities. And again, this is going to show us similar things. It's going to look very similar. It's just showing us different data. This is how dense the plasma is as it comes in. Okay. It just gives us a visual. All right. So let me go up here. And this is the speed, which is kilometers per second. Um, roughly for every 400 kilometers per second, you get 1 million miles per hour. That's a rule of thumb. It's not exact, but it's close. You can do the math if you want. Um, it's not necessary, typically. Um, usually we just want it up it's fast or slow. <laughs> honestly um we don't really need to know exact uh speed unless we're talking about difference between six and eight hundred or something like that then yeah we need to know that but um the difference between 600 and 625 we're not even going to talk about it's just it's just so minute it doesn't really affect much but anyway there's your speed so i, I wanted to show that to you i mean that's really it guys um there's not a whole lot more to show i tell you what I will do, though, before I let you guys get out of here. I'll show you the, um, the NASA in little spiral. 
and you're seeing that one blow off now watch when it shows it here here on the date so that's like on the 13th when that blew off so that could be that other one that was showing here on seeds um so let me x out of that and i'll show you the one on seeds again because what i'm gonna do if you guys ever go over here to seeds and i highly encourage you to do so if you go over here and just start clicking on buttons do it okay um that's what you need to do to learn you got questions come ask me i'll try to help you but there's one eruption okay um let's see if we can't catch the other one maybe we'll see sometimes the data is just not there and we don't get to see it but you can see kind of some eruption stuff going on here um let's take it back to check out this one i think this one shows it maybe not let's try this one yeah that's the one that's the one i showed you guys yesterday and it did it erupted pretty big like so um the cme had just happened i'll tell you what we can try to see if we can see some of that now this might have updated so let's check it out okay yeah so again i want to point this out too that what you're seeing there is not unusual okay there is nothing crazy going on here i'm going to explain to you why okay somebody's going to tell you we shouldn't see this if you guys were to take a snapshot of this a screenshot flip this over and overlay it you would see these things start to line up okay what it is it's just a flashing ghosting image it's it's a it's a camera phenomenon all right so it's just an anomaly that's all it is it's a camera thing and it's very easily proven and i i don't even waste my time trying to prove that stuff anymore because i it, in my experience people that want to believe that that's something crazy um they don't have any proof uh at all and i can show you <laughs> i can overlay this and i've done it many times and i can show you that hey that's an exact like duplicate of what's going on um so yeah i don't waste time on that anymore but i wanted to point that out so uh, but as you can see here guys that's going backwards that definitely is coming our direction okay um, so we do got some space weather incoming. It's probably going to hit in the next couple of days. So, um, yeah. Uh, guys, please, again, share this one out. Um, with me having to pull that down, the numbers on the video are probably going to suck. But I don't care about the numbers. I just want people to see it so they know what's going on. Okay? Um, the numbers don't bother me at all. I don't care about the actual number itself. I just want people to see it so they know what's actually happening um but again with that being said guys i am going to go ahead and pop off here god bless have a great day guys yahushua saves and um yes christy like a lens flare very 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 good very good analogy good comment and uh yeah you can drink this kool-aid